Hey, what's up everyone? Um, so, uh, part two, video two, um, continuing on my thread about uh, my vegan uh, lifestyle. Uh, I wanted to talk for a couple minutes about what brought me into veganism. Um, if people might be interested, I, <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, this might surprise you, but I am a um, army veteran. I served three years, regular army, um, in the U.S. Army. <clears throat> and um, that was right out of high school. Technically, I was in the inactive ready reserve during high school. You know, the way the army recruits in uh, high schools. Uh, don't get me started on that. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so right maybe two weeks after graduating high school, I, um, went off to the army for three years, and, um, that was not a culture that I meshed with very well, but, uh, I really made the most of it. I'm thankful for a lot of parts of that. Um, again, that's a whole thing that I don't need to go into, uh, so directly, but, um, one of the things that kind of, you know, I was kind of thinking about um, sort of the way they build violence into the military, uh, promote the idea of sort of bloodshed, and you still practice with a bayonet, um, you know, you, I don't know, of course you use all the weapons and stuff and, and firing ranges and stuff like that. Um, but somehow the thing that resonated with me maybe the most um, well, one of the things was that you had to, when you join the military, you have to sign papers that recognize that your body is now, uh, <laughs> there's my cat pepper, that your body is, um, belongs to the U.S. government. So there's all sorts of interesting and archaic rules about that. Um, so that was a little bit interesting to stomach. Um, but I have vivid memories of the cattle trucks. They actually move you around in cattle trucks sometimes as soldiers. So you have your rucksack and your M16 and um, whatever, and, and you pack into those cattle trucks. And um, I wasn't traumatized or anything myself. I mean, it stunk. It was crowded and uncomfortable. It was too crowded to like sit down or do anything, or maybe even move or I mean, turn around or anything. <clears throat> but um, it was around in there that I started thinking about things. I, I became a vegetarian then about a year into the military, um, and um, which was very different. Basically, there weren't, I don't know what it's like now, but there weren't vegetarians um, like in my platoon and everything. Um, people were a little bit astonished you know they kind of asked the, the regular questions like how do you get protein and how do you you know how are you alive and how can you build muscle and stuff like that um so uh so i was just vegetarian in the military so that was like 97 to um 2001 i don't know early 2001 kind of I guess the summer of 2001 I got out. I know I got out a couple months before 9-11 happened. Um, so anyway, I was a vegetarian and I was thinking about like the needless slaughter of animals and general oppression. Um, another thing that you see in the military um, was how many people were sort of poor and uneducated. I went in and enlisted. So, even though my family is somewhat educated and I'm very middle class and my dad went to college, I did not go in as, as an officer. Um, and so I went in very enlisted. Well, basically, um, you know, most of the people who are enlisted are um, disadvantaged in various ways. A lot of people of color, um, a, a lot of people I mean, almost everybody seemed like they were coming from a background of poverty anyway. Not everyone, but most folks. Um, so you kind of coupled that together. Like, there's some serious oppression going on. Um, you know, the way that the poor of our country fight the wars 
for wealthy older white men basically who decide to go to war when they're in Washington. Uh, I came back to my hometown, which is Bloomington, Indiana. Love it here. Great town. Hope you get a chance to visit someday. Um, and went to Indiana University. Love Indiana University. Um, big. I don't normally wear this jacket. But <laughs> um, it's like in the 60 to, 60s today in Bloomington, Indiana. It's supposed to be, you know, this is February 3rd in a temperate region. It should be in the 30s, like tops, but it's in the 60s. Uh, anyway, so uh, came back and started getting educated, started reading things, started learning about, you know, um, you know, factory farms and the use of water, oil, resources, the um, how resources were spread out, um, things about like how people in certain places view like the ability to eat meat as a main commodity and they'll um, kind of lose all sorts of quality food for s some meat. Um, uh, was learning about like, I mean I think I, this was more in high school that this started, but you know you learn about like food chains, you lose 90% of the calories for every step in the food chain. So I started thinking, oh gosh. I mean, if you're growing, looking around Indiana and seeing all the corn and soybeans, you're losing a ton, a ton of calories that were growing. It's just going into this meat um, that's basically for privileged Americans. And I don't know, it's, this is all way too much to go into in this video. Um, but I started putting that together and uh, went vegan then, I don't know, within a year of being in Bloomington as a freshman in college. So that was, uh, eh, that was probably 2001 still, maybe 2002. I kind of forget, <laughs> somewhere in there. Um, and have been vegan ever since. And I'm 44 years old now. It's, um, so, I guess I haven't been a vegan 23 years. <laughs> Must be like 21 years, something like that. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. Quite a while. <laughs> um, so I'm going to stop the video there. Um, one, it's starting to rain on me. Um, but two, you all um, have done some good listening already. <laughs> so <laughs> don't worry, y'all. I have lots of things to say about all those areas um, for, for this uh, YouTube channel. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Peace and love.